Oh hey, it's Sabrina. So today I'm sharing with you guys a super late July wrap up. So um, I didn't read all the books that I wanted to, but I do feel like I had a really solid month. I'm also going to talk about the book Tubathon, so you'll be seeing my wrap up for that in this video. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let me just start by saying that I totally failed during the Booktubeathon. This is like my third year attempting it and um, failed. I wanted to read four books and I only got to do half of one. Um, unfortunately, the book that I actually got to do was Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, and I'm still actually in the middle of reading that. So, um, and then all the other books that if you saw my TBR, I didn't have a chance to get to, but hopefully I will read them relatively soon. The first book that I read for the month of July is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. So I, for the most part, enjoyed this book. I gave it a three out of five stars. Like it was enjoyable, but it wasn't amazing. Uh, if you don't know what Everything Everything is about, it's about a girl who um, has been told that she's literally allergic and um, to everything and she gets sick easily which could cause her to die so she's like lived in her house for 17 or 18 years and has never really traveled or explored anything and has never really interacted with anybody and it's a YA novel contemporary novel and so this neighbor moves in and she develops a crush on this boy and he kind of changes her world and she decides at some point that life is worth living and she's gonna move out or not move out she's gonna go on a trip and um, experience the world even if it kills her. So that's the premise of the story. Um, I didn't really particularly love the ending. I think that's why I gave it three out of five stars. I just felt like there was so much hype for this book that I had really high expectations and I didn't really enjoy it that much. I mean it was good but it wasn't amazing. I just felt like there was a lot of plot holes in this story. Um, for example, spoilers, if you haven't read this book, mute me right now. Um, but like how could a mom get away with like lying and keeping her daughter captive and saying like, oh she had this disease but really she didn't. I mean like her mom had some major serious mental health problems and I think that's kind of one of my main issues about this book is that it didn't portray mental health issues in a good light and that was hard for me. So that's it for the spoilers. Overall, it was a good book. If you are young and you like young adult books, I feel like Sabrina and High School would have loved this book, but now, 10 years later, not my favorite. The second book I read was actually sent to me by review. I do have a video, I'll link it down below. It's a, called Pigeon Blood Red. I'm not going to go deep into this because I have talked about it before, but this is like, I don't know, I want to say like an urban action slash drama book and I really enjoyed it. It's basically has like crime and stolen jewels and like hitmans and stuff in it which I thought was really cool. It was really fast paced but I had a little bit of issues with the ending which is why I gave it three out of five stars but for being you know not a big book, a book that was sent to me for free, I actually really enjoyed it and three out of five stars I'll link it down below. The next book I read was like my favorite read for the year so far I think and it is A Court of Thrones and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is my first novel ever that I've read by Sarah J Maas. Um, I have never read the Throne of Glass series and so I had really high expectations for this book and they did not disappoint. Um, when I started the book I didn't read any spoilers or reviews and then when I was about halfway I started reading some of my friends reviews and it kind of lowered my expectations a little bit. However by the end of the book I was like I love this book. It's so freaking good. I think the only reason why I didn't give it five out of five stars was that it was a little bit teeny bit slow paced. Um, I feel like it, there wasn't a lot of smooth transitions in my opinion and um, the writing did seem like a little bit juvenile but overall I loved the book. I loved all the characters. I really in, was just impressed overall by the whole story and it took me a while to even remember like oh yeah this is a retelling of Beating the Beast. Like some parts of it it doesn't feel like that and other parts it really does but I really enjoyed it and I can't read to, wait to read the next book and I gave A Court of Thorns and Roses four out of five stars. The final book I read for the month of July was 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northrup. Now this has actually been adapted into a movie and it was adapted about I want to say three years ago and I really loved the movie. I saw it when it was on HBO a while ago and I just was completely struck by it. I 
saw that movie and was like, I really need to read that book and it's been on my TBR forever. So I listened to it on audiobook and I really enjoyed it. The um, narrator's voice was really, I feel like, true to what an African-American man from the South would sound like back in that time period. I really enjoyed it. Um, there were some times though where his, with his accent and stuff, it was hard to hear what he was saying. But overall, I really loved the book and I actually gave it three to five stars. Um, I think some of the reason why I didn't give it more was some parts of it were hard to understand. Some of it was really boring when he would describe like what the slaves would do on a day-to-day -day basis. Like that was stuff that I didn't really find particularly interesting, but the end had me just like so happy and I enjoyed it and I gave that one three out of five stars. If you wanna learn more about the time period and like slavery in the mid 1800s, I would recommend it because it, it talks, you get a lot of insight on how like slaves were treated. It's a lot, it goes a lot more in depth than like what we learn about in history class and, and while we're in public school. So that is everything I read for the month of July. Let me know down below what your favorite read was for the month and I'll talk to you very very soon. Thanks for watching.